Hello everyone, welcome back to the Indie Geek Guy channel and today we are here for <laughs> some potential hot steaming rubbish. <laughs> That's right, today we're jumping into Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, the movie that I don't even remember happened <laughs> until a few days ago. But in all honesty, this movie did take me by surprise because last I heard was Netflix were doing their own live action Resident Evil show or movie. I don't know if that's still going ahead. I don't know if that's still a thing or not. Um, but that was the last thing I heard. But then this movie popped up out of nowhere. It seemed to be taking the movies back to the games in terms of the characters that were being used and the setup. But I remember the trailer for this. I saw the trailer for this and was just like, that, that looks horrible. <laughs> so why am I doing this? Why am I watching this movie that based on the trailers alone wasn't wasn't looking good. There are a couple reasons. One, I've actually seen, I think, all but the last of the other Resident Evil movie franchise. Um, I never got around to the last one or two of them, I can't remember, but I, I'd seen bulk of them. Um, yeah, they went downhill. <laughs> so I am kind of morbidly curious about how this rendition of maybe trying to get it back to the games would go down, how that would feel. Two, I am, I wouldn't call myself like a mega fan of the Resident Evil franchise. I would say I'm more of a casual fan. I've played a handful of the games. I've certainly not played all of them. Uh, I sort of started proper with Resident Evil 4. That was the one that I, I, I bought for myself for the like, first time and played through the whole thing. But I had played some of the earlier ones. I'd played the very first one. I think I played that at someone else's house when I was a kid. And I think two as well. Um, and then Resident Evil Outbreak was one that I somehow ended up owning. I don't remember how. Uh, um, but really, as I say, it was Resident Evil 4 was the first one that um, I bought with my money. My good old pocket money and uh, played through to completion. And then from there, I've sort of like gone from game to game. I haven't gone through all of them. I, ha I haven't played all of them. Uh, there have just been a few over the years that I have tapped into. So I'm kind of familiar with the game's rendition of the world and the ideas behind it and how insane it can be it's one of those game franchises that is so scattershot in terms of quality i think it's fair to say but also just tone and style like it seems to be all over the place and which is probably why the movie takes on them have been so hard to get it right because there's so many angles you could potentially come at it from but i think ideally Fan fans of the whole thing see Resident Evil as like the grandfather of like survival horror and that's what they want the movies to be um which I think is fair enough I think I can definitely see where that comes from even though the original game has some really <laughs> like the first original game has some really cheesy shit in it and really over the top stuff so I don't know I think that's where the problems may lay where a uh, director or a film studio whoever um comes like what angle are we going to take with this where are we going to go with it so that's where my morbid curiosity comes in with this movie which seems to be directly going at it from the game point of view and to see where they go also as a bonus one of our black sail boys are in here uh billy bones himself is in this movie i'm not sure who he's playing he's on the front cover my guess my guess he's either going to be playing uh Chris Redfield or he's going to be playing Wesker I assume it's going to be one of those two he certainly has the guns he has the he has the guns for uh a Chris but I don't know I feel like the blonde hair might lean him more into the Wesker so we'll see there's that but who knows who knows it may surprise me in certain aspects but yeah I have low expectations so you know that that could work in the movie's favor at the end of the day but before we jump in, please remember to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy the reaction, if you enjoy the review. Uh, yeah, give me that big old thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. That's reviews, reactions, gameplay, all the good stuff. It's all here on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Don't miss a thing. There are also social links down below, mainly the Discord server. You want to go hang out over there with other people who like all these movies and TV shows, all that good stuff build the community, be a part of it, just head on over there. But yeah, that's it. That's the preamble. Let's see what this latest rendition of a Resident Evil movie has to offer. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. The fuck? The 
fuck's that? Creepy skeletal hand. In this orphanage. Who'd run in this place? <laughs> Did a great job hiding there. Doing a real good job. There's a fucking ring wraith running around an orphanage. <laughs> Alright. Like a moth to the flame. Go into the creepy tent, why not? Where do you live? Below. Yes. That's right, child. Go into the creepy tent. Everything will go well for you. Wait. Redfield, isn't it? Chris and Claire Redfield? Ah, uh -huh. hello. Names I recognize. Yeah, Doc, you might want to keep an eye on uh, on some of your experiments coming up from below. What kind of security does this place have? Well, obviously, it's shit. That's how the outbreak happens. And she was scared, scared for the rest of her life. Scarred for the rest of her life. Oh, oh. This trucker man with his burger. But why is Claire here? Why is Claire in the car? Was the lorry car? Where the fuck it is? You're gonna hit the zombie. I remember this prop game. Claire absolutely is not in this lorry in the game though. So. At least I don't think she was. I don't remember her being in the lorry. It's not dead. It's a zombie. <laughs> yep, there it is. There it is. She's just wandering off. Bye. <laughs> I'm just wandering off. Going off into the woods. <laughs> Imagine turning round to that. Imagine going... We've definitely just killed someone, and now their body's gone. <laughs> it's been an accident. Need help. Maybe stop, yeah, stop licking that blood that's clearly infected. That dog's gonna turn. Raccoon City, once the home of Umbrella Corporation, the world's largest pharmaceutical company, is now a ghost town. Umbrella's are transitioning to a new location. All the remains of the skeleton crew of the last few employees, and those too poor to leave. Looks really small. I thought Raccoon Seat was bigger than this. Yeah, don't know why that zombie didn't just, you know, attack. <laughs> just decided to get on up and now I'm going. Bye. Bye. Going into the woods. Ah, there he is. There's our boy. Why don't you just take a seat and leave the poor kid alone, huh, Wesker? Oh, he is Wesker. He is playing Wesker. There it is. Hey. You snooze, you lose. What? It's Jill Sandwich now. Oh my god, as if they went there. They they found a way to put the sandwich thing in there. Like, the most forced way <laughs> to get a Jill sandwich reference in there. Literally the only reason that scene existed. So, I heard that you shot your partner in the ass during training. Is that true? Yeah. Leon S. Kennedy. That's Leon? Stand for stupid. That's Leon. Leon shot someone in the ass in training. What? <laughs> What? I know he's meant to be like new on the job, but someone found a body. Pass no mind. We're uh, nice people. Once you get to know us. Yeah, I don't know about Wesker. Keep an eye on him. Leon, you really shoot your own partner? Y yeah. Um, She's bleeding. It's a out of her eyeball. Story. She's Lashif. He's been doing that the last couple of weeks. You don't think you should see someone about that? Yeah. <laughs> you might mind you see a doctor. Although, probably all the doctors are umbrella people and are evil, so maybe not. That woman, that probably just wasn't as bad as it seemed, right? Yeah, she went fucking flying, dude. It wasn't that bad. I already have the sensation that this movie is going to be juggling one too many things. Yeah, that dog's, that, that dog's gonna get you. That dog's about to get you. There it is. Well, that, there's that. Yeah, I feel like, <laughs> I already feel like we're going to be juggling a lot. We've got Claire, we've got Leon, we've got Wesker, we've got Jill. <laughs> Hello to you too. 
Right, just leave this place, okay? Just leave. Oh, look. They became best buddies. I think there's something seriously wrong with this place. Really? Really, we'll go that way. I kind of hit this person, but but they just got up and they, they walked away. You hit someone? Not listening to me? They, they just got up and, and walked off. You could be party to a hit and run. Are you not listening to the part where the person who got smacked by a lorry stood back up and walked off? It's in the fucking water. Um, this whole town's been poisoned. A couple days ago, they had a little incident. Uh, I'm not just talking about a waste poisoning the water. No, I'm talking about a real bad leak. Zombies. I saw a monster. Oh, honey, you just had a bad dream. It's okay. I never let anything hurt you. Well, that sounds foreboding. Hello. Uh, we've had a mass break of uh, zombies. Uh, they're everywhere. Uh, you might want to think about getting out. <laughs> gonna walk back in here uh where did you see that monster where where did, was he out the window while we blow you all up it's so weird watching this is such a weird viewing experience because i kind of know where we're heading but all the pieces are slightly different <laughs> it's so weird Crap! just get out of here okay i'm also having a hard try time trying also having a hard time buying Chris. Nothing against the actor, I just... I'm not quite seeing it. Claire seems okay. I've seen her, I've seen her in other things, but... She, she's doing okay. I can see that in relation to the game, this, this actor and that. But Chris, I think it's Stephen Mel's brother playing him. Not... Not quite lining up for me as of right now. Hi. Itchy. Itchy. Tasty. Itchy. Tasty. No, you didn't. See, okay, you did see that. Don't duck down next to it, you goober. Unless the kid's just hiding. The kid might be hiding. Right. Well, that happened. <laughs> so far, the zombies... Very passive. <laughs> very passive zombies. I suppose they're just... Kind of just on the brink of turning at this point. They're not all the way there. Jesus Christ. The time is now. Check your locker. Who would have thought he might betray all of them? What's Wesker got? Got some goodies. Everything you need to know is on this device. The Kindle. He's got his very own Kindle. Raccoon City will be destroyed at 6 a.m. Oh man, Sony is really just putting themselves everywhere. There it is some glorious CG flames. Oh my god, what is this? What on earth is happening? <laughs> and that guy just shot him. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> what? Okay, so like time has passed, I forgot. So maybe he knows what's going on by this point. That's why he shot him. Not, you know, tried to extinguish him or anything. It was just like, fuck this guy on fire. Die. <laughs> I mean, it was the right thing to do, ultimately. But how does he know that? <laughs> fuck this. Fuck what? You don't know what's going on. All you know is that a lorry overturned. So where are you going? Who's in charge now? You are. No, what? I'm, I'm, I'm a rookie. What? Right? Yeah, what? Well, congrats. Okay, bye, I guess. Bye. You're in charge, Leon. I feel like I need to rescind my earlier comment about, oh, it's a good thing they're dropping us in it and we're just going for it. 40-odd minutes in and really nothing has happened. 
<laughs> like nothing has actually happened yet. Where are they? Watch out. CGI Crow's gonna get you. There it is. Really? What? I mean, so would you confiscate that? It would have. It looked like the smart thing to do. Uh, hey guys. I'm on. I'm on Jill's side. <laughs> Shoot the fucking CGI crow. All right. We're at the mansion. We're doing this. I can't remember if, game-wise, if the events of Resident Evil Two are meant to sort of overlap with Resident Evil One. If, like, the two things are happening simultaneously, or if it's meant to happen directly after, I honestly can't remember. Um, it's been a long time. But already I can tell that this movie maybe should have focused on one or the other, rather than trying to do both. <laughs> well, that's just opening fire. They're just shooting everyone. That's the umbrella we know. <laughs> the CGI broken glass was a nice touch. Oh, look, he's back. Zombie dogs. Zombie dogs. There it is. There is a CGI zombie dog. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be out of ammo, mate. I can already see what's going to happen here. He's going to get a clean shot on the dog and he's just going to go... And you're fucked. Like, Why? Why would you put yourself in that kind of position? He's going to get bitten on the ass. He's going to get his ass bit off. Okay, no, no. Passive zombie being passive once again. Yeah! <laughs> oh, thank God for Claire, huh? Drop your guts! Show your heads! Drop, did you say drop your gun? Clearly not holding a gun. I've got a gun. Fucking Leon, dude. Show me your hands. It's the reveal. Classic Resident Evil reveal. I want to shoot him. There we go. There we go. About to get caught. He's prepping up. He's getting ready. Oh my god, where that guy come from? Oh, it actually got me a little bit. But it was extremely cheap. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, all that juicy, shitty looking CGI blood. Listen, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Jill, do you hear the massive clunking door open? Jesus! What's with vehicles just randomly exploding <laughs> in this? I think it's sort of jammed. Man, they're really... Like, I know he's a rookie, but... He would know how to use a shotgun, right? At the very least. <laughs> Is he okay? Does he look okay, Leon? Leon, does he look okay? Truth, what, what truth? Fuck oh, me! Hey, fucking boy, man, I'm gonna be. Jesus Christ. Hey, whoa, whoa! That's... Open the goddamn door. Wow. It's my gun. Wow, God, Leon. Really? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, maybe point the gun at that guy. Maybe point the gun at the creepy dude in the cell. Sale? Sale? Oh my God, I can't talk. This movie's bamboozling me. You're fucked. There it is. Mmm, more really crap CGI blood. Oh, thank God for Claire, huh? Someone around here knows what they're doing. Oh, thank God the helicopter didn't get in the way of the secret tunnel. <laughs> they contacted me several months ago. They're just some people with a vested interest in getting hold of whatever dirty secrets Umbrella are keeping down there and exposing them. Okay. Hey, exposing Umbrella, good thing. I... 
how that zo how the zombie even get there? Just having images of that zombie just like, I'm just going to position myself right behind her and reveal. <laughs> Right, but he's gonna go find out. He's gonna go find out what happened and how it happened. So he's doing it for money to expose Umbrella. So are they gonna show him like, hey, you know what? I'm pro Umbrella now. I'm gonna be the boss of Umbrella now. What are we doing here? Back of the orphanage. Well, the orphanage clearly has secret tunnel to Umbrella. Base. That's what we're doing here. Oh, something's on the lamps. Is it going to be a liquor? Seems like that would be what would be crawling on the ceiling. Hi. I'm a face inside another face. Ah, there he goes. There's the liquor. Oh. Yep. That's a good practical effect. Well done for the gory practical effects, but I loved how little either of them gave a shit about his dead body. <laughs> Meanwhile, that looks like absolute trash. Okay. Well, that happened. Some of the CG is like... Like, it's passable. And then some of it is straight out of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> oh, was the keys with the heart and the diamond and all that shit. That doesn't quite explain how she vanished out of the tent earlier on when she was a kid. Thank you. Who is that? Who? What? I guess like umbrella experiment is the answer to is the answer. I'm scared of the light. <laughs> the zombie's like eh, light bulb. <laughs> I applaud the effort, but it was very disjointed. <laughs> Okay, all right, we get it. We get it. He's getting closer like a cat. We get it. Oh, he disappeared. There he is. Hi. <laughs> Why was he crawling closer like a cat and then decided, ah, you know what? I'm going to go around the back. <laughs> wow, this is Umbrella Corp underground base. It has seen better days, huh? This is where they were bringing kids from the orphanage. They were experimenting on them. Claire, it's okay. No! No! Wow, Leon is remarkably unaffected by everything that is going on. <laughs> William, what have you been doing down here? <laughs> well, uh, I've been cutting up people and keeping them alive. Good, good, like puppet and stuff so that's it like an actual decent effect who do you work for it doesn't matter well that went about as expected okay don't do it in the stupid lady okay that was dumb that was fucking dumb oh he injected himself he Absolutely sacrificed his wife to inject himself. I thought something scary monster was going to happen, but nope. Jill shot, shot him. Boom, dead. And now he's going to inject himself, and that's going to be the sequel bait. No, 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 we're going to get you out of here. No, 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 Jill. What? You just you shot him. Would you? What? <laughs> he ain't dead. That's our sequel bait right there. He's coming back. I will say at this point, I'm very much struggling. Just in general. <laughs> Just struggling. Um, 
Claire is about the only character I give a shit about at this point, if I'm being honest. Wesker was interesting, but really ham-fisted and rushed there. Chris, come out and play. Oh yeah, these two are meant to like be best buds or some shit. Oh, it's like the eyeball guy. I know this boss. I know this boss. You shoot it in the eyeball. From my brother. Shoot in the eye. Shoot in the eyeball. No, Claire. I have this. Let me do it. <laughs> Didn't even shoot it in the eyeball, did you? No, nope. well, you shot him in his eyeball. Interesting. Oh, uh, now we hug. Now we hug. Five minutes till bomb bomb time. Bomb bomb time? That's what I'm going with. <laughs> this, that's what this movie's done to me. <laughs> Final boss fight. Got our final boss fight. Sherry, get behind me. Hi. <laughs> I'm big monster man now. Ah. In the other eye. In the other eye. Oh. <laughs> they keep hitting his actual eyes and not his mutated eyes, and it's kind of annoying me. <laughs> oh, he did it. Oh, he's finally doing it. My God. You ugly fuck. What the fuck is... Okay, he couldn't operate a shotgun a minute ago, but now he's got a fucking rocket launcher. Okay. Okay, movie. Okay. You have your cake and eat it. You do your thing. <laughs> Found it in first class. That was like the most Leon-esque moment he's had this entire movie. What the fuck's going on with that cow? What the? <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. That cow had more personality than most of this movie. <laughs> Is that how we're ending? And they dare. They dare use the John Carpenter font. <laughs> On whatever the fuck that was I just watched. <laughs> Wesker. Go on, Wesker. Get on out. Get yeah, there he is. Hello. You're awake at last. Ah, here she is. I was wondering if she was gonna show up. What happened to my eyes? I can't see. And that's why he has to wear the glasses from now on. Ada. It is? Ada. My name is Ada Wong. Alright, there's your sequel bait. That is probably never going to happen. <laughs> If it does, I will be blown away. All right, I'm gonna endeavor. I'm gonna endeavor to start with some good things. Claire, Claire Redfield, I actually quite like. I thought that's, that feels like a genuine, like good rendition of the video char game character brought into a live action movie. She was capable, competent, smart, like all the things that I associate with the video game character was present and no, she looked the part, not exactly the same, but she looked well enough the part. And I enjoyed, like, her journey, I suppose, if you can call it that. Like, she figured this all out. She wanted to go and save people and then got caught up in the mix. And that's where it goes. And, yeah, and then we get into juggling too many characters and she sort of gets lost in the fog as that goes on. But at least there was that going on. There was that character that I cared about. And was well done, well performed, the, the material that she's given to work with. And yeah, so at least there was that. I will also applaud how few and far between it was. There were a couple of good practical effect moments. Very rare as they were. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, like the, I assume it's some sort of puppet animatronic plus actor like opened up on the table and all the goo and the, all that going on. Like that was, you know, that was creepy. It looked good. And it was well realized. Uh, there was a couple of good, like, after death, like, makeup jobs on a couple of actors, well, like, all the blood spurts when it looked real and, uh, like, injuries and all that kind of stuff. Like, so there was some good practical effects there, just very, very few and far between. And 
you know, I assume too expensive and time consuming for what I assume ha had no money. <laughs> this movie probably had zero dollars put onto it by the looks of it. I'd also say I liked like there were some some decent recreations of locations from the video games, mainly the police station. Like the police station in the lobby hall looked like the video games lobby hall and it was like, oh, there we are except we only spend maybe two free scenes in there and then we leave it and the rest of the police station looks like generic police station number five whereas you know the the video game counterpart even though i've not played that game fully like, it definitely has more of a personality about it same with the mansion when you first enter the mansion it feels like oh this is the video game space it looks like it but then as soon as they start wandering around the mansion it becomes kind of generic house number five and where it's going to be pitch black the whole time but that is it that's really the only good things i can pull from whatever the fuck that was that i just watched <laughs> last week i watched halloween kills and i was a bit like muddled on it i wasn't hating on it i i was just a bit like i don't know where this is going i'm not sure if i'm enjoying this or not but you know what all my problems i had with that all is forgiven all is forgiven <laughs> after this just happened <laughs> i kind of called it at the start when uh they started introducing all these characters i was like okay okay there's way too much going on here they are not going to be able to balance this like everyone is going to get pushed to the side not have a moment to shine and going to struggle really rooting for anyone or following anyone and yeah that became the case very quickly when you know the like clearly though like i say they were trying to have their cake and eat it by having the first original game and the second game rolled into one, changing some of the pieces in terms to make that work and just trying to have everything, basically. And what ends up happening, as you might expect, is that it all gets lost. It all gets lost in the jamboree of trying to do everything and it should have just focused on one thing or the other. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I actually can't believe I'm going to say this. But you know what? The Resident, the, like, the original Resident Evil movie, like the first one of the first batch of movies, is actually better than this. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like, that movie actually has, from what I remember, it was a long time ago, a, a coherent, here's the beginning, here's the middle, here's the end. Yes, we're steering away from the video game stuff. It doesn't have too much in there that actually feels like the video game, but at least it felt like a movie with beginning, middle, and end. It felt like you go on a journey with your central character, and it felt like the Umbrella Corporation underground facility actually felt like an underground facility that had like experiments going on and was vast and had all sorts of dirty secrets in it. Here, it almost felt like they went out to someone's back shed and shot a lot of that shit. And frankly, if you if you think about it, if you wanted to do a Resident Evil movie, you wanted to do it and make it faithful to the video games, the first game is kind of ideal. Like, it's set in largely one location you you just have this kind of bottle atmosphere or a few characters investigating this mansion things start to unravel and then you go into your final act which would be going into the facility and the discovery of all that and you know it kind of works you could do that on a relatively lower budget i would think and you'd be able to pull it off but like i say the thing that really fucks it up for this movie is that they're trying to do too much at once and yeah just falls under the weight of it really distracting element was that raccoon city didn't look like a city at all it barely even looked like a town it, <laughs> it looked really small i will also say i mean in terms of like things that were good and maybe there's a bias here because i've just finished black sales and you know I, the actor is a part of that a big part of that and is a an enjoyable part of that despite his character i won't spoil it wesker I kind of liked the idea that the setup I mean everyone can correct me if I'm wrong on this but Wesker I believe it does start off on the stars team in the original game but eventually becomes basically the head of umbrella right like he becomes the the antagonist and there's a betrayal and stuff I can't remember all the details of it but I was like okay I see the Wesker thing having potential like I like the actor he's actually doing an all right job he's Got, got this conflict going on where where his loyalties lie and he's kind of done with raccoon city and everything about it um and you know it was an interesting setup but it it's so ham-fisted and rushed through there at the end where 
he's like i just want the vials i've been sent here to do that just give me the vials and he's like no i'm not going to and then they tried to shoot and it's stupid and he then sacrifices his wife and it's just a rolling thing <laughs> it just unfurls in a such a chaotic way and uh, struggling to care about any of it as it happens <laughs> i think that's the biggest thing here i really was struggling to care about anything or anyone as the movie rolled along like i was couldn't get attached to any, anyone uh leon is probably the protagonist in the resident evil games that i'm most familiar with and like nothing against the actor here but it's not his fault because it is purely clearly the material that he's given to work with in the direction that the the writing and the direction is trying to point that character in that's doing this but he's just an absolute goofball buffoon which i get you're playing into the fact that at this point leon's young he doesn't he's not the hardened person even by resident evil 4 who's been he's been for a lot at that point but like from the very little i do remember from his introduction in resident evil 2 he's capable like he knows he knows how to use guns he he knows how to like look after himself in a tough situation he's he's still learning on the job as it were but he he is capable here he is just an idiot <laughs> like an absolute buffoon and it, it gets to the point where you're like i i do not care what happens to this man like i do i don't care he's an idiot i'm amazed he's still alive <laughs> as this rock goes along right there at the end when he had the rocket launcher and he has like a little quippy one-liner and that felt like the most leon-esque moment I suppose that was kind of the point that the movie was trying to go for, that he doesn't become Leon as you know him until he takes out the final boss. But the final boss was kind of shit, so I didn't really care. <laughs> so, yeah, we're in this place where we're juggling too many characters, uh, juggling too many storylines that go along with that. We're essentially trying to cram two whole stories into one and just trying to wing it, basically. Um, production value is all over the place like the cgi effects were god awful i'm sorry i know people who work in like visual effects and cgi and all that stuff like they, they get a shit time of it and and it's unfair to like call them out but clearly they were not given the time or the resource to do a good job on this like it's it was so bad like i said there were so many moments where it just felt like they shoved like a a PNG or a JPEG image over the top of something and was like, yeah, that'll do. Get out the door. Like, that's some shit I would do <laughs> if I was trying to do something. And ultimately, my, like, I feel like my philosophy of I was doing a movie, it would be like, if you can't achieve it in a way where you think it's going to work, don't do it. Find another way around doing it and, uh, you know, you find a, another creative avenue if you, if you can or just strip it completely. Cut it out of the movie if you can't achieve it because... Like I say, the biggest issues here seem to be budget budget issues. Like the, they did not give them the money that was required in order to tell the story the way that they were trying to do it. And then there's just so much stuff, like unexplained stuff, like why is the liquor here? I guess it found its way up from the Umbrella Corp by that elevator somehow. Um, but we're not actually going to explain how the liquors came into creation in this movie. Like imagine watching this movie and not having any knowledge of resident evil at all i can just imagine being the most confused person at all and and i'm only like as i say a casual kind of fan of the franchise and i kind of know these things from piecing the puzzles together but if i had no idea like i could just imagine how fucking like fever dream this would be obviously they have all these little easter eggs and references to the games like they had the dude with his hamburger just sort of like oh zoom in on the burger and you had the keys with the different like logos and colors and stuff, which was really weird because it looked like in that moment when she went to unlock it, she used the green key on clearly the red symbol, <laughs> which was really weird. And then we get to the other element, which is what I kind of called at the beginning of this video, where I said, I think the biggest issue people have with trying to make a live action rendition of Resident Evil is they never know what tone to go for because the games themselves can both be like survival horror at its finest but then also incredibly stupid and goofy like they even got the jail sandwich reference in in here which is you know a reference to the first game with one of the most bizarre bits of dialogue <laughs> and readings of said dialogue 
you know and it's there is this weird balance where somehow the games kind of get away with it whereas when you try to do that in a movie it, it takes a really clever bit of writing and direction to pull that off whereas here didn't get pulled off and it just felt very tonally confused like at some points it was like we're going for the goofiness then at other points no it's scary like it's all over the place and does not merge well at all lots of cheap jump scares one of them got me it made no sense like what how that came about um but you know lots of that kind of stuff going on the the one that <laughs> annoyed me the most was the it's like a cool like bit of lighting idea that they like oh wouldn't it be cool if we did this bit where he's getting closer slowly uh, as the light goes on and off and or well, actually quite quickly but it's then he just disappears like it's like i get the idea on paper like that you could film that in an interesting way but in the moment it doesn't really gel well because one it just feels like the zombie just stops moving every time like the light is on and then off like it feels like it should be on him way quicker than it actually is and then just it doesn't make sense that the zombie is like charging him as the light flickers on and off getting closer like a weird little internet cat meme and then when you expect it to be right there he decides ah oh, you know what i give up i'm just gonna loop all the way around and come from the side instead like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense it's stupid it's just there for the sake of getting in a cheap jump scare, which happens a lot in the movie. And then we have Orphanage Creeper, who's like clearly meant to be some sort of an experiment on a kid that uh, that umbrella was doing. And then sort of it's been lurking around the orphanage and the tunnels and stuff. And it's just kind of a sad case. It felt like that whole thing could have been cut from the movie. Like like the only reason that that, like, that character or creature or whatever you want to say is was there was purely so claire had the keys to get down to umbrellas corporation like secret base that is clearly someone's shed but like that seemed to be the only reason that, that character existed so yeah ultimately a lot of just frustrating not very entertaining <laughs> like and again like it takes nearly an hour for anything in the movie to actually like start happening like the first 40 to 60 minutes of the movie is people sitting around kind of talking establishing mood and or trying to establish mood normally the sort of stuff you would do in the sort of first 30 minutes of your movie but here oh they stretch that out <laughs> just to get the runtime up i assume because they probably can't afford to do the set pieces that they want to do so in order to get a feature length runtime they had to stretch out all that opening stuff so yeah ultimately i feel like resident evil in live action movies needs to go back to the drawing board yet again <laughs> because i don't see how they're going to pick up the pieces for this it's a shame because um as i say the actor playing wesker i think is a good choice um if they decided to go back to this and go from the beginning just make the first game into a movie focus on that bring him back as wesker do the, do that maybe get a different Chris. Jill was all right. Didn't really have much screen time, but you know, she was all right. I was having trouble buying into Chris though. Uh, I felt like his voice was just a little bit too, just it wasn't gruff enough, you know? It just wasn't, <laughs> he didn't didn't have the weight or gravitas I sort of think about when it comes with Chris in the video games at least. Again, nothing against the actor. I just don't think the, the role is right for him. Go back to the beginning. Just make the first game into a movie. Keep it tight. Do it on a lower budget if you have to, but be creative about it. Get like some good actors, even if you have to go for like not known actors. Uh, let them kind of carry it, and you know, just be smarter about it. <laughs> Ultimately, as you can do like a tight, isolated, creepy horror movie with zombies in a mansion with weird puzzles and like uh, the experiments and the looming threat of this umbrella corporation and you know you can do it it is doable um it's just decide on a tone stick to it and you know that that would be my humble <laughs> as my internet dwelling idiot over here would say to do with resident evil um not that that counts for much but clearly what happened here did not work <laughs> 
I cannot, in all good consciousness, like, recommend this to anyone. Because it's not even to the point of being, like, so bad that it's entertaining. It's just in this ground of, what, what is going on? What, what? Why are we doing this? That's that's ultimately where it comes out at. And it's a shame. I feel bad for like the actors and I mean I can't speak to like the behind the scenes people because I don't know whose ideas were what on this and and if things were forced upon them and they just had to get on and do it or whatever the case may be. But you know, I feel like as far as I can tell on face value, it looked like the actors were trying to do what they could do with the material they were given. So I kind of feel bad for them. But yeah drawing board back to the drawing board with resident evil movies please <laughs> thank you for watching this video guys if you enjoyed it please hit the thumbs up button it helps me know you liked it. it helps it get seen by more people also consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos that's reviews reactions gameplay all fun stuff check it all out but that's it for this one i'll catch you on the next one